we have on Mr. Warren Phillips, who is known as the non-toxic dad, and he promotes a toxin-free lifestyle. And we talk all about optimizing your health, all about systemizing your business. We're gonna be diving in. Do you want blissful balance in your personal and professional life? Great. What's up, guys? My name is Kerry Jack, and I wanna help you. Happy hustle, a life you love, one full of passion, purpose, and positive impact. I'm a lifestyle entrepreneur, a professional model slash actor, a digital marketing specialist, a podcast host, author, a biohacker, an eco warrior, a martial artist, a hippie cowboy, and a humanitarian. My goal is to educate, inspire, and entertain you to live a life of passion, purpose, and positive impact. It is time to happy hustle your dream reality. Yee yee! All right, my brother, Mr. Warren Phillips, welcome to the Happy Hustle Podcast. I am super stoked to rock the mic with you. Oh, it's an honor to be here, man. This is a long time coming. You've had this uh, podcast that's crushing it, adding value to entrepreneurs. And it's, uh, dude, I just love you, man. My brother uh, from Montana, <laughs> I was there eight years. And so you, we love the same things, being in the country, fishing, hunting, connecting with nature and each other at a heart level. So, man, I just, I'd love spending time with you and Again, this is going to be so cool and fun. Yeah, man. I, I appreciate you so much. Like even the first time we met at a mastermind in Utah, I was like, this guy gets it. Like he is a happy hustler through and through. You're a serial entrepreneur. You're known as the non-toxic dad. You're a scientist. You're a father of three, loving husband. And you have something really that the whole world needs, which is information on how to live a toxin-free lifestyle. So I'm really excited to not only, you know, shine light on your entrepreneurial journey, which is nothing short of remarkable, but your recent rise to social media startup too, with hundreds of thousands of followers just in the last six months, because this message is so important and people really are waking up to all the toxins in our everyday reality. So I want to get into all that good stuff. But before we do, Warren, what's something interesting about yourself that not too many people know? Well, I mean, I, before social media, there was a lot that people <laughs> didn't know about me, right? Um, you know, I mean, if I just go right from my heart, it, I'm obsessed with uh, my family and my children. You don't see them as much on social media because I'm really trying to protect them um, and protect their hearts and, um, and, and from other people because social media, what I found out doesn't really bother me, but they, they attack things, right? You can, mm. you can, and they find everything's wrong and instead of finding everything's right. And that's an entrepreneurial thing, right? As <laughs> entrepreneurs, we're always finding everything wrong with uh, what our team's doing instead of everything right with what our team doing. And if you can find what everything one is doing right inside of your team and an organization, you're going to grow a lot more quickly. Now this has taken 20 years to learn the, <laughs> these lessons. Yeah. But so that I'm, I'm really, if, if there was nothing left in this world, if I lost the, the house, everything, if I still had my children and my wife and my family, that anchor, um, nothing else really matters. I could be happy in a tiny house or a big house or, you know, living on a farm or living in the city. As long as I have that, that, that core, um, I'm, I'm just a super centered and happy guy. And then anytime I get outside of that and I neglect that, you know, as entrepreneurs, we always, we start losing our strength, but it is truly my strength. And my family is the most important thing in the world to me. So I don't know if everyone knows that. So now you do. There you go. I love it, man. And that's really what I like to focus on is, is not only happy hustlers who are crushing it, you know, professionally, but also personally too, because I know, and you know, lots of people who have quote unquote success financially, but their wife doesn't like them. Their kids don't know them they're not happy. They're not fulfilled. And for me, happy hustling is about the holistic approach to happiness, crushing it both personally and professionally and being blissfully balanced too. So I, I want to talk about how you actually accomplished this and, and how, you know, you're not perfect. I'm not perfect. We're constantly still, it's an ever yeah. teetering, you know, uh, puzzle, will you of like prioritization, but I know you're prioritizing right now the non-toxic dad movement. Talk to us just about what got you into putting yourself out there on social media and especially preaching this message, message of living a, a toxin-free lifestyle. Well, first, I want to tell you, I'm an all-American javelin thrower. People don't know that about me either. So <laughs> I am. I have. I still have records at, at my old alma mater in um, Allegheny yeah. College in Meadville. So th there is a 
besides the the family thing, that's something you know came into my mind. Yeah. And what you've said with balance, um, I've been to huge seminars with super wealthy guys, and they're up front and they're saying we have this and the house and all this, but they said you know I'm divorced. You know I worked really hard and now I'm divorced, right? And the the, the energy waste when it comes to to that is is, is taking. Um, 10 years off your entrepreneurial journey by doing it wrong, by, yeah. by prioritizing, you know, work first. So anyway, so the, your question is, um, how did this non-toxic dad thing come about? Correct? Yeah. So, you know, it really started in a meeting with my team, like, uh, actually going back to seminars, the same seminar, I saw the, the very wealthy, successful guys talking about their marriage and they can, they can do all the fun stuff, jump out of airplanes, you know, travel to the Himalayan mountains and climb and do all the things that we would love to do. But now they, they lost their core and their strength and their voice and like all that stuff. But when I went to those events, I also was challenging myself. I had this belief structure and belief is everything, as, as you know, Carrie. And if they've listened to your podcast, you know, your belief really dictates your outcome. Tony Robbins, um, you know, your words affect your belief, your belief affects your actions, your actions affect, you know, your outcomes in your life. I had a belief structure that I hated social media because I wanted, you know, it was almost like religious. It's like, if I don't use social media, my kids don't use media. Um, I don't want to touch this stuff because every time I swipe, that's a minute away from my core beliefs, which is spending mm -hmm. time with family. And I noticed that it was taking away from that. So five years ago, I had a, actually as a, one of Tony Robbins, you know, mentees, um, said to me, he's like, look, Warren, if you're struggling with this, and I go to always go to events, not looking for business. I always look for the guys that have made mistakes and what's what's really matters in life. How do you become a better husband? How do you become a better father? Because I found their mistakes become your strength so you can bypass that. Yeah. And so I asked that advice. It's always you could always grind and hustle and do well. It's easy to make money, right? If you just stay persistent and grind and grit it in, right? And if you hustle, you're always gonna win. But the strength, the long term, the end goal to have a have that balanced life and family and do it well without making the mistake, without being the guy I got it all but lost it all. So I'd always ask them. And I was having that conversation with the fellow. He said, Why don't you just delete it right now? So I deleted it and never wanted to go back. And then, you know, during, you know, especially during the COVID years and all of that, I mean, I was still off social media. So I thank God for that. But then I had this belief that. I didn't want to be that guy. Like, I don't want to be that talking head. I don't want to be that person who does this or that, or who's going to listen to me, or I'm going to posture like all those little weird things. Hmm. Maybe, you know, uh, I won't be good, you know, at this or whatever belief structure that I had. And I had many, right. Yeah. Mainly is I'm like, I don't want to do social media. I don't want to be that guy. I don't want people to say, Hey, you want to be popular. You want to be cool. Cause I didn't want to be that guy. Cause I could, I could give a rip. I got everything that I need. Right. Yeah. But I also saw that that belief structure was really holding me back, right? Mm. And I, I was at one of these meetings again, and it was the simple answer. Why don't you just try it, see if you like it, see if it's effective, and see where it goes from there. But not trying is truly failing, yeah. right? So I, I was failing because I wasn't trying. And I'm, but I'd make up, oh, man, I've been on camera for like 20 years. Like, I'm decent on camera. Like, they just weren't shut up, you know, just try it. So... I shut my mouth. I started trying it. And um, once I got the first video to go to a million, and this was after like try number six, right? So it happened pretty early. Wow. I did a, um, a one on toxic chocolate with lead and mercury, which is right up my alley. This is what I did for a living. We, can t we should mention my backstory. I, I lived in Missoula, Montana for eight years, mm -hmm. cleaned up hazardous waste for a living, um, studied the binding of heavy metals in natural environments, chemistry department. That's where my master's, most of my master's work was done. And then I got sick cleaning up heavy metals, had to sell my house, leave the Montana of my, you know, my strength at 25 is uh, when I left. And uh, actually, was it 20? Yeah, I think. No, not 25. Yeah, I think 25 years old. I was super sick with toxicity and all those symptoms. I had to move in with my parents, blah, blah, blah. But I had this message because of that. So mm. I had all this experience and I start trying. I do the... Uh, the, the chocolate video off the cuff in Whole Foods, it gets 1.2 million views. And I'm like, ah, that's, that's just a fluke. I, I, I just hit it. And then I did one on um, microplastics that are in tea bags. 
like 1.4 million. And I'm like, wait a minute, maybe I am good at this stuff. Mm. So, you know, start doing it more and more. And then, you know, hired a social media manager, people to start editing videos. And now I got videos, several over 9 million views. So, and then people are saying, what kind of impact are you really having? I'm like, like a small TV channel, like if you will, or a small news channel, yeah. that many people are getting a message to choose a non-toxic lifestyle that could be hindering whether they're going to have kids, whether their brains are clear, whether they're going to get a job, whether they're going to get the diseases, the modern day diseases, whether it's heart attack, cancer, diabetes, the suffering and the pain um, that you can help people avoid by getting out there. And, and this is my message, man. This is what I live. I am non-toxic dad. I have a non-toxic home, non-toxic organic furniture. I lived in a home um, when I first learned about this toxic, I didn't even couldn't afford furniture. So I didn't have it. I didn't want to have it. I couldn't afford a hardwood floor. So I didn't have a floor, right? So I truly live this message. It, it is I am non toxic dad, I breathe it and live it every day. So when I communicate it, it comes back to the old saying, if you can communicate something authentic, mm -hmm. people sniff that they know that you're real, they know that you're, you know, impassioned, and you want, truly want to help and make a difference. And they feel that hard energy. And then here you go, you know, uh, you're, you're blowing up social media and you're having a good time. You're having impact. Now you're creating relationships. You never thought you would have had, um, people, uh, are coming out of the woodwork to support the message. Women are, are coming out of the woodwork to support the non-toxic dad, the crunchy dad. Right. So I just love that. It just yeah. energizes what you're doing and you're getting, it, it's, it's just a, a beautiful thing, man. And it's hard work just like anything else. Yeah. But if it has that impact, it, it, it matters. Heck yeah, it matters, man. It's so rewarding to, you know, to see you step into your unapologetic self, your, your truth and, and really just shine a light on this alternative way of living. But yeah, man, it's so rewarding because you are living it. And, and that's the thing. I see a lot of gurus online, you know, fake gurus who are putting themselves out there and they're preaching a message, but they don't actually live it. And uh, I, they don't I think, have the experience. Yeah. Yeah. Or they don't have the experience, you know, and, and that's the, the thing that people, like you said, they sniff out the bullshit. You know, it's just, if, is this person telling the truth? Is this person authentic? Like vulnerability nowadays is, is like its own form of currency and being real and I think for you, people understand, you know, your story too. Like you actually suffered from heavy metal poisoning. You actually had to live with your parents. You had to stop your entire life to heal. You went on a journey. You grew multiple companies and supplement products that actually helped detoxify these heavy metals and these poisons. Talk to us just about that entrepreneurial journey first, because I almost want to give the happy hustlers like, even more credibility, like you've grown multi, multi-million dollar companies doing, solving this problem. Now you're just, you know, promoting the educational and awareness piece, but you've been, you've been in this space for years. How did Revelation Health even start? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I've been doing this for 20 years. Um, yeah. So really finding own answers for yourself, like you're getting sick. And then when you see the, the reality that the, these toxins are in all of our homes. And I couldn't believe it really, Carrie. It's like, really, uh, silver amalgam fillings are making, making me sick. Really, was my job making me sick? Really, is the air quality some of the worst in the country out here in Salt Lake? Is that making me sick? Is the government really not protecting me? Like, is diabetes medications actually doesn't fix the problem of diabetes? Like, so I had to make that shift. Once I, once I woke up, Right. Once the, I came out of the matrix of how the world lives and because of marketing and you just get hypnotized yeah. because you either tell yourself lies or you listen to someone else's lies, but you hear it enough, yeah. you start believing it and you start saying it over and over again. So it's really easy to manipulate people, by the way. Right. As long as they hear it enough times, they, they begin to believe it. If you're in a bad relationship and that person's talking down to you, even though at first you didn't believe them, you know, two, three years later, you start believing that. So. Once I woke up to that uh, coming out of the matrix, right, if you will, you know, the blue pill, I guess I took, um, <laughs> you got, I got really empowered and sick. I mean, it's not sick. I got pissed, not sick. I was sick. But I got really pissed. I'm like, holy shit. Like, 
there's science here. Like this stuff is the root cause yeah. of so many illnesses, so many diseases. And we're just getting away. People are just getting away with this stuff. I'm cleaning up abandoned mines in Montana and Idaho, and hardly anyone's getting exposed to these heavy metals through the Army Corps of Engineers and national, um, the, uh, whatever, the National Forest Service. I'm partnering with them. We're cleaning up federal used defense sites, old abandoned mines, but really no one's getting exposed, but we're allowing silver amalgam fillings. If I take that same mercury meter and stick it in your mouth, you're exceeding EPA air quality standards by like a hundred times. If you drink a cup of hot coffee with silver fillings in your mouth, you think that's not going to hurt your entrepreneurial journey, having the second most toxic substance, the neurotoxin attacking your neuro tissue and your brain tissue and your hormone disruption and your energy and your testosterone, which helps you make decisions, whether you're male or female, like this stuff is life stealing and not life giving. So mm -hmm. I got super pissed and I had an opportunity essentially for the last 20 years to take that understanding and teach it to doctors that were open to it. And believe it or not, a lot of folks, uh, especially chiropractors weren't even open to that, right? Um, because it was just chiropractic fixes that fixes everything. Naturopaths at the time, it was just homeopathics. But in the last like 10 years, the world has truly woken up to the fact that toxins are one of the main causes of inflammation and therefore disease that, that we're facing along with the foods and the toxins, but we're also robust and strong. So how that journey really started was educating practitioners. And then we're like, well, maybe we should offer some of these supplements that we're telling practitioners to have. Maybe we should start offering them to the public, start offering health coaching to the public. So we started Revelation Health as the best of the best of all the great products that were out there. So that's how Revelation Health started. That was our coaching company. It was health centers of the future, um, training thousands of practitioners around the world how to live a non-toxic lifestyle, how to teach their patients to live a non-toxic lifestyle. And so Revelation Health was born selling products. And we're like, well, there's, there's some missing gaps in these product lines. Maybe we'll create a patent. And we did. And patented some zeolites that detoxify the body. And um, and the, just the journey continues and just finding niches and ways to help people focus on cellular nutrition and cellular detoxification and really just, uh, you know, what's this, what's the saying? If you, if you can solve a problem for someone, you don't really have to sell anything, right? So just finding areas that truly solved problems, finding a, if, and if I could find a problem that, that, that costs a dollar in a year, right? It costs a dollar to to do it and I can get a million people to buy that, that's a million dollars, right? So if you add value and find problems and create solutions, then it's easy to be an entrepreneur because you're really focused on answering other people's problems. You're not focused on making money, you're fo focused on creating solutions for people that don't have them and they're looking for them. And it's easy to market to them because you know the problems that they have, right? So you're just speaking to that avatar, you're niching down and I really niched in on the detoxification because obviously that was my heart and passion, what I suffered with. So yeah. and then it just spun out from there and other supplement companies. And as you grow and understand the systems and create systems and know about leadership, it's just in, you know, the old saying too, it takes 20 years to become an overnight success. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, man. I mean, I love the, the things you said about niching down and solving people's problems. I mean, that's what business is all about, just solving people's problems and making money doing it, sure, is a byproduct. But at the end of the day, you know, if you really want to live an abundant life, you have to solve problems for people. And you solve the problem of, you know, optimizing their health, detoxifying heavy metals and some of these toxicities through Revelation Health. And I know you were very big and still are into, you know, online marketing and direct response marketing. And, and I'm wondering, and you've scaled these companies. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, I just want to stay here for one more beat when it comes to entrepreneurship. If there was like a lesson that you could extract from growing and scaling your companies and, and really had to distill it into like something tangible that all the happy hustlers out there who want to maybe have an online business, who maybe even want to have a product-based business, but you also were product and service-based. If there is a, a tangible tactic or tip that you could give when it comes to actually scaling a business successfully, or maybe, you know, something that uh, you did that was a big mistake that you learned a better way. Do you have anything in that I arena? So many. Yeah, I know. I got <laughs> like hundreds of those. 
So, <laughs> I mean, so when you first start out and, and you have an idea, right? Um, you got to know it's going to take years to, sometimes you can have a, a quick hit, but usually it's at a, it's at consequence, right? You'll push the marketing and not do ethical e-commerce. You'll do a VSL and grandpa, grandpa, you know, you have a heart attack and, you know, using the emotion to sell, which is key for education and, and key for communicating, but you can really do things that are unethical and immoral and sometimes illegal. And those things always catch up with you and you're always mm -hmm. going to lose. You yeah. might get the quick hit, the quick money, the quick win, but every, every single one of them um, eventually comes tumbling down. So never go unethical, um, yeah. immoral or illegal because it will ruin your life in the end and yeah. um, you'll pay the price. Um, you, you might feel that it's just like anything else in like a relationship, right? Yep. Um, it, it's, there's consequences to every and consequences and unintended consequences. So it can just beat down the line of your life, your reputation. It's just not worth it. Um, I'm blessed enough to, because of getting sick, right? I've had a really good um, moral, ethical and um, legal code to how I do business because I couldn't do any of it. If I, if, if I cheated in, or, or uh, cut back on anything that I was doing, then it was like, a, you know, my whole belief structure would, it would just undermine who I am. So I'm not saying that I'm Mr. Self-righteous over here. I'm just saying I have that protective mechanism. And that being said, when you do have a passion, a lot of the biggest mistakes that I made in a lot of other businesses that I've coached over the years is that they put so much time and energy into branding into the the amount of making the perfect product and like overdoing it using too many trademark ingredients that really don't make a difference and you have a product that is so expensive and you put so much time and money into the box and the branding and the name and the website you're running out of money to market and test and which is the key is testing and testing and testing and testing and continuing to test. If you're not testing, you're never winning. It's currency, right? So if you're getting traffic to an offer and you're using paid traffic or affiliate traffic and you're not testing, you're losing, but you can't test unless you have good margins, right? So you really do have to have that balance of creating a product that is ethical, um, that does what it says it does. And you just niche down into it, but don't, price yourself out. And a lot of times people take advantage of you. So yeah. always get three bids and quotes and don't believe any biz every business coach or every uh, marketing agency that comes your way. Just take your time, be slow, um, methodical, earn, grow, reinvest. Don't try to get rich quick, play the long game, keep your day job for a while. Um, and you'll know when it's time. Usually God and the universe will set you free when the time's right. So those are you know, I mean, I have more and more of those tips. Leadership is key, uh, is one of the greatest, hardest lessons I've, I've met. I'm an all-American athlete. My pain tolerance is pretty high. I love the hurricanes. I love swimming in the big waves, um, but your team doesn't. So as you grow, um, it's okay when it's one or two people that kind of agree with what you're doing. It's a new company. That you, they don't burn out quickly. They're working late with you, but eventually you have to shift more into leadership and caring for your team and not over, not pushing them too, too hard and treating them right. Right. Finding the wins, telling them the things they are doing, you know, correctly versus picking them apart all the time. You did this wrong. That wasn't perfect. You can never grow a big organization that way. You know, yeah. most people love what they do. They're trying as hard as they possibly can. Um, and just because you would try harder, or do it better. Um, gives you no right to talk down to them. Just watch your words, mind what you're creating with this. It's, especially as an entrepreneur, people look up to you. They, they care about you and you can uh, quickly hurt them. And then in, also in that, when you're giving direction and you're just talking about the next idea, they're overwhelmed from the first idea that you gave them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and you're, you're, you're not even saying it, you want it to execute right now, but now they're getting overwhelmed and they do nothing. Or you're micromanaging them and all they do is wait for you to give them what to do. And then if you want to create the life like that, I have having a family, which, and I've made my mistakes with my first daughter, my last daughter, I get to spend all kinds of time with her. But I think that I had to have my hands on everything. And you really don't, you really can't scale and grow a company. Everything has to come through you. Um, you create robots, not a team. And so non-toxic dad wouldn't even be able to be here if it wasn't for my team saying, we got to take this message to the world, Warren. This is definitely what you should do. They got behind me. They're the ones that said, this is what you need to do.
Mm. Um, so it was coming from my team, not even from me. It wasn't even like my idea to do this. It was their idea. Although I had the concept five years ago, I bought the website. It's actually my wife and I like, um, to even go back further, 15 years ago, I had people giving me warrant approved stamps because I was so, you know, <laughs> anal about what you should put in your body, right? Yeah, Is that yeah. warrant approved? And they'd make fun of me, right? And give me little stamps. I still have the stamp. So, but definitely stepping into who you really are, what you're really passionate about. So you have the energy to continue and you have to hustle all the way through it. Uh, most people don't have success because they, they quit right before the finish line. Yeah. Damn. There's some gold in there, y'all. I hope everyone just goes back, rewinds 10 minutes because Warren just dropped some hot fire on the mic. And, you know, I think a lot of people glorify the, uh, the entrepreneurial journey and they also glorify the grind where, you know, for me, I, I actually, I think you can be happy within the hustle. You can find joy within the journey. You don't have to burn out in order to achieve success, quote unquote, in, in your, you know, in your business. And really you're a great example of, of, you know, learning from your mistakes, Warren, and then also doing it differently with non-toxic dad, making sure families, the priority in, and really leveraging the team, being good to people, being kind, having integrity, you know, these are things that yeah, they seem a little cliche, sure, but they're also cliche for a reason because this is what builds reputation. If you, if you, if you want to have a real business, you yeah. better do these things because you're just yeah. sniff it out. If you don't have integrity, you'll destroy the culture of your company and they'll sniff it out. They'll turn you in too. Like, so you're being watched, you're being looked at. Like, so yeah. you, if, if you want to win, you have to be moral, ethical, and legal. You have to put your team first. Um, you have to be respectful. Like, you got to be a good person to win, right? The, the days of, um, especially in, in today's day and age, you just can't get away with it. I mean, you yeah. will get canceled. Like I cancel toxins, your team will cancel you and you yeah. can't grow and achieve great things. You can, you can make a million dollars, you know, just outsourcing. If that's your goal, you know, God bless you, but that's not a real company. That's a cash grab. That's yeah. not really making a difference, right? But to scale and grow, you really have to get really great at leadership um, and really incrementally, slowly, uh, creating a long-term vision for your life. So if you're watching this and you're young, you're 25 years old, you, you want a family and kids start doing this stuff now so that, you know, there's 10 years where I didn't see my family like I should have. So I made the mistake. If I could go back and say, crap, if I would have trusted other people more, if I would have, uh, let go more, my company would be twice or if not 10 times as big and I'd have even more freedom. I would enjoy it. I, I lost 10 years of, uh, of time with my children because I wanted to do it all right. It's, mm. it's better to make less money and do things correctly instead of quickly, you know, over yeah. the years. And, and those are big mistakes, but I'm, I don't regret it. Right. I, yeah. I, I am who I am. I, I can look back and say like, Oh shoot, I, I missed all that time with my daughter. But then you can also say to yourself, Warren, you know, I, look what I can do now with this last child that's 19 months, right? What a blessing because I learned. I'm not still grinding and uh, making the mistakes that I did, you know, 15 years ago. Yeah, man. Sage words, brother. And, you know, that's really what it's about is the evolution where you learn from your mistakes. You can learn from Warren's mistakes, my mistakes. You know, I burnt out as a tech entrepreneur. I was grinding 100 plus hour, you know, uh, weeks and, all doing it for profit, success, ego, you know, all the drivers society deems important. That's what set me on the happy hustle journey is I, I burnt out. And that's really why I'm so passionate about helping people achieve this blissful balance. And it sounds like a pipe dream to some, but it really isn't. It's just about being intentional and measuring yourself in these 10 different areas of life. You know, I, people who listen to the show and, and watch the show, they know the 10 alignments, but that's really, you know, important to just kind of take stock on where you're out of balance right now. If you aren't prioritizing your loving relationships, right? If you're not optimizing your health, another alignment, you know, then you need to pivot and make adjustments. And I want to kind of go back to the optimizing your health one, because you know, and I know as an entrepreneur, if you don't have your health, your, your life force energy, your chi, your just 
the the business is not going to do shit. Like you're not going to make any money. You're not going to help anybody if you can't help yourself. If you're not able to, you know, have the required energy to produce. And what I think, I don't want to say I don't want to categorize it too much, but the majority of people don't understand the energy vampires in the form of these toxins that are sucking us dry from our from our energy. And a lot of it is the things that we put into our body, the things that we put on our skin, our largest, our largest organ, right, is our skin. And the things that, you know, are being emitted, you know, EMFs and blue lights and all sorts of toxins. When it comes to like the True. key toxins that you really optimize for when you're going through, you know, let's say an entrepreneur's home or their business or their, their daily routine. What are like the big toxins that you see the majority of people succumbing to that if they were made aware of could make a different choice? Yeah. I mean, there, there's a lot, right? There's yeah. a lot of big ones. Um, so, well, first of all, if I'm talking to a younger audience, um, don't, there's the opposite of getting like Instagram is, can be toxic. Like lots of things can be toxic because you only have so much time to spend in a day, right? And so much energy to yep. give out. So if you're giving your heart energy by scrolling through and looking, if you're a guy, you're looking at girls, if you're a girl and you're looking at guys and you're dreaming and you're imagining and you're wasting all this, this time and energy and um, that's your chi energy going out to someone you don't even know or hoping that they text you back. Like you can't, like you, you, you got to break that habit, that addiction, because that's a big part. And I just had a, yeah. the reason I bring that up, I had a friend who I've been coaching on this and he just told me more. And I, I just, I, my last, today is the last video I'll watch because I'm deleting Instagram. Um, I just have too many, I'm looking at girls way too much interacting and it's distracting from my long-term goals. Once again, I want to get married and have children and how I'm going about this right now is actually stealing from that. So hmm. you have to look at your life, both in health and decisions that you're making every day. Is it moving it towards my goal or is decisions I'm making right now taking me away from that goal? Preach so, it. And, and it's hard, right? So when you break that addiction, when that guy told me, turn, delete Facebook, and I wasn't looking at bad things. I, I was just wasting my time right on it. Just, it was just more of a time waste. It still was hard to let it go. There was an addiction there. It yeah. was hard, right? And it, this comes with food. This comes with making decisions to EMF proof proof your home, like our friend Ryan Blazer, who's been yeah. in my house and yeah. electricians, and it costs money versus going on a trip. I'm having my house rewired and you know making sure my outlets are done correctly, right? And which a lot aren't, right? So there's so many things. I'm always investing into things. Well, my main weakness for me for success is always my health. In my connection with God and family. Like those are my, the things that I spend most of my time on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Apologies for interrupting your programming, but I have to tell you the best investment you can make in yourself is one in which helps you acquires skills. You've probably heard people talk about, oh, just invest in yourself and you'll be successful. Yes, that's true to a degree, but you have to invest in skills that will ultimately help you achieve your desired results. And I think one of the best skills one can possess, be it an entrepreneur or an aspiring entrepreneur, is the sales sword. Really knowing how to sell, utilizing pressure-free persuasion, which will make you more money and more impact. Now, if you want to know how to sell more efficiently and effectively, I just launched a sales course called the Proven Roadmap Process to Selling Millions of Dollars and Helping You to Increase Your Conversions Guaranteed. And you can get access to this new sales course that The Happy Hustle is launching at thehappyhustle.com forward slash sales. And if you act fast, you'll get it at the lowest price it'll ever be available because we are launching it and we want to gain amazing testimonials and social proof to further share this knowledge. So if you act fast, you can get it at the lowest price it'll ever be. That's at thehappyhustle.com forward slash sales. Now let's get back to this episode. And even after doing this for 20 years, it's hard to invest. You're like, ah, I'll be fine, right? But toxins build up. They steal away from your health happiness. They cost you time later. So either you start addressing them now 
or they're going to show up and you're going to have to address them at some point. And at that point, you're going to lose more time because you might have a disease. You might eat healthy, but you have mercury amalgam fillings in your mouth. And those are linked to heart attacks, right? Because mercury yep. affects um, the mitochondria in your heart. You might get um, start losing your memory because it causes brain inflammation and it's a neurotoxin and affects your hypothalamus pituitary, affects your hormone production. So um, all of these things add up. So if you have silver amalgam fillings, find a biological dentist and get them out and get them out slowly and correctly. Prepare your body, hire a coach to make sure they know what the hell they're doing and get those things out correctly because that's a, a long-term um, source of toxicity that's that's going to rob you of energy. I remember I had an entrepreneur that we detoxed and uh, he's like, he had a, an amazing health. And what he found was not only did his blood, and he was a scientist, like a biohacker um, and an entrepreneur working for like NASA, like super smart guy. And he's like, he just did it for fun. He just like, are these guys full of it? You know, this detox program that we had at the time. And he, so he did the blood work. He did it very scientifically. He was a science-based guy. And he found that life, because of detoxification, his life even got better. Um, he read more books. He was connecting with people um, that he never thought he could, would connect with before. And I'll tell you why. Because once you have more energy and you're more focused and you're less distracted in ADD, and that's what happens when you start removing things like lead and mercury from your body, you, you get a focus and then you get an energy because your testosterone is coming back. So you you have more value in yourself. So you're putting yourself out there more. So and his relationship with his kids and his wife got better, right? Because he's now more connected. He's more um, focused, um, present, you know, all those things. Toxins, it's not just all in your head, right? Yeah. And that's a big part of it. Fear and all that also stop you. But toxins are literally stealing away from things you don't even realize, right? It's like living in a room that the lights are dimmed down and you think the sun's shining. But once you start detoxifying your body and doing and removing the sources of toxins coming into your life, um, detoxifying stuff out of your body, reducing those exposures and reducing your body burden of toxins, th the level of happiness and growth, it's, it's just, it's unimaginable. But we, as men specifically, we think we're tough. We think we can handle it all. You're just a wimp, you know? And, um, you know, so what? I'm eating this you know, toxin. I'm still doing sucrose. I'm drinking diet Coke. Ah, it's, it's probable cancer. Who cares? But everything that we're exposed to right now are slowly robbing away from our, our ability to hustle and yeah. do the, and to reach the goals in a healthy balanced way. Yeah. So, and you got to push even harder, drink more caffeine, more toxic energy drinks before you know it, man, you know, a big life altering event's going to happen. So if you can be smart and play the game correctly, Start, especially if you're healthy now, don't wait until the bottom falls out, right? Yeah. Start making these decisions now, like getting your mercury amalgam fillings out, buying organic furniture and saving up. Don't get the cheap stuff that's off-gaffing volatile organic compounds. If you paint your home, get no VOC, non-toxic, not just no VOC, because no VOC still can have VOCs. It has less VOCs, like five milligrams per, um, I think it's like five milligrams um, per liter, um, is the standard, but non-toxic means zero VOCs. So when you paint your house, be intentional about reducing the amount of exposure um, that's in your life and then start rejuvenating the the areas that help your mitochondria and your cells and um, your vitamins and your vitamin D and magnesium and zinc for hormones um, and tes testosterone and just start optimizing, rejuvenating your body and thinking more long-term. Because yeah. it's, it's the more I get healthier as I get older. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you got to play the long game, both with your business and with your, your health. And it's those little things that are robbing our energy. A lot, like a lot of people, again, they don't realize their home environment is just, it's sucking the, the energy from them. I had on uh, the podcast, Darren Olean. Do you know Darren from Netflix's show uh, with Zach Efron? He um, he wrote a book called Fatal Conveniences, and I should connect you. Oh, he, he's kind, he's he, kind of buff, longer hair, longer gray yeah, hair. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's like a blonde, blonde hair. Uh, lives in California. Um, yeah, I do know he him. He, he's he's yeah. a rock star. 
Yeah, he was just on the podcast and I should connect you with him because he he wrote a book called Fatal Conveniences and it's like using tinfoil, all the chemicals from your, you know, shampoos, you know, when you are using fluoride toothpaste, you know, he's like we went through the gamut and I was like, "Oh my goodness." And then water quality, all the, you know, the the arsenic in your water or like there is so many particles and dust and all this stuff. And we're not trying to scare anyone, truly. It's just raising your awareness because in order to make change, you need to be aware of the problem. So here Warren is talking about how you can live a better, healthier, optimized life for not just you, but your family. And that is really what it's all about is like just living this life to the fullest. And I love your message, man, because I know when people like get their health back and it's like, you, it's literally like just pulling the the covers over or uh, like, you know, uh, away from your eyes and, you know, seeing the light full and clear. It's, it's a different, it's a different vibe every single day when you are living toxin free. And I see it even just with you and your energy, man. So kudos to you for what you're doing. I know a lot of people are probably like, all right, I got to go deeper into war and stuff. I want to see, you know, what you really recommend to optimize for and some of these, you know, different ways to heal our bodies and, and to protect our families, where can people go to learn more about you and, and everything you're up to? Well, the, I think the best place is obviously we, we're, we don't have much time. So that's why I do, you know, 60 second or less, um, I cancel stuff like I'm, I'm canceling shampoo, right? But then I'll give you like what you should use or I'll cancel um, fragrances and what you should use. Or I did the one in the, tr the truck with the, the Christmas trees, like fragrance guys, Gals, get rid of it. If it's perfume or a chemical fragrance, we're not talking essential oils, even those can be overused as well. That's a huge cause of brain inflammation, brain fog, brain fog. Look, I just said brain frog, so good timing. Um, so it really will affect your production in life, yeah. right? You think that it's okay. You think that it's, and you get addicted to it because they they create these in chemical warehouses and they, they're neurotoxins and they're excitotoxins. So you actually get addicted to it like you would sugar. So you yeah. think that these fragrances are great, but really they're big robbers of your production, highly documented, carcinogenic, brain inflammatory, headaches, um, you know, which I get headaches every once in a while still. It takes so much of my production away. I had one this morning um, and I rarely do this if I can't take white willow bark or uh, also electrolytes. I do all this stuff. I had to take two aspirin. I don't take Advil or, or Tylenol, anything like that. But I knew I had to be on for this, right? But my morning, I suffered through it. And I lost hours with my family. My workout was crap. You know, so optimizing your life is really saving you time. And yeah. getting rid of fragrances is a big deal. Yeah. No, I love it, man. Just, again, bringing an awareness. Like, that's what, that's what the world needs right now is just to realize what's holding us back. I, uh... I think everyone should go give non-toxic dad a follow on, uh, online, check out non-toxic dad, your website, um, nontoxicdad.com. And then I know if you, if you do have heavy metal poisoning or some of these, um, you know, mercury amalgam fillings, like you have revelationhealth.com as well, which has a whole bunch of products that can actually help you get rid of it. And I, I've taken your zinc, I've taken your cellular detox and it's the real deal. So if you guys want to check that out, we'll link it all up in the show notes. Um, Warren, I do like to ask a couple of traditional questions to all my guests. We talked a lot about health, but I always like to ask like a happy hustle hack, something unique that maybe you haven't talked about, something that you do that we could deem a happy hustle hack in the health arena. Do you have anything that comes to mind, be it a tip, a tool, a tactic? Well, I mean, I, I, when it comes to biohacking, I, there's certain things that create really big outcomes, um, in your health. So some of the ones that I like, if you can afford it, or you can go somewhere, get an oxygen chamber. I mean, those, uh, it's, as far as inflammation and brain function, a really good, uh, really good tool. So, uh, there's lots of different, there's actually that whole space is getting disrupted, but the hyperbaric chamber space. Um, mm -hmm. actually one of the, the big companies, the, one of the founders just, just passed, um, uh, Oxy health, um, just a few days ago, it was like a hit and run or something, kind of a crazy, weird, um, 
uh, really weird um, circumstance, but I found that uh, hyperbaric chambers are very, very good for hacking your brain and getting energy and, and um, focus. I like red, yeah. red light therapy as well. Um, I yep. kind of integrate it with um, detox and sauna, infrared sauna, where I take carbon um, 10, 15 minutes beforehand. I take the cellular detox to grab up the mercury and lead that's coming out when, as you heat your body up with infrared. And then I red light myself naked and uh, I have a lay down one and I red light myself. It does increase testosterone pretty good for men. So I yep. know a lot of guys are off on the short term gain of TRT. Um, that has consequences on your organs yeah. and tissues and longevity. Yep. Um, if you choose that, it's fine. You know, I get it. Um, you know, I might someday do it too. So I'm not going to throw you under the bus, but know that there's consequences and is, there's always a consequence. Um, um, so don't, I would say avoid the TRT hack. Cause I think a lot of people would, some people come on and say, Warren, you got to get on TRT. It changed my life, my testosterone, it grew my business, but eh, you might not be around as long. Right. But yeah. some people can make that sacrifice. I believe in choice. So hyperbaric chamber, red light therapy, nice. girls and boys on your privates it helps, you know, balance yep. the hormones. Your hormones are your, are your strength. They're uh, what help you sleep well. It's what gives you energy and, uh, all of it, your thyroid hormone, of course, adapting to stress, cortisol. So hormone optimization is key. And if you remove toxins through the infrared sauna, which is a really easy one. Um, again, I'm not here to pitch you my products, but we have the, the detoxification products, cyto detox, things like that can remove heavy metals. I got a patent yep. on it. So that's real. You know, those are the things um, that I feel that'll move the needle in your health. Yeah, no, I do all those things. And I, I also agree with you and your, your methodology. Like you got to if you want to boost testosterone, you know, you could take the short gain, sure, potentially, or you could, you know, do the little things that over time will boost it naturally. And, um, yeah, DHEA you know, cream detoxing. is another good one. I do that. DHEA yep. cream, um, that works really well. It's natural with your hormone pathways. So if you want to yeah. do it that way, that it's and I'm just cycle on and off of that. It's just, you know, hundred percent natural and safe. So, but hormone nice, optimization, um, it's super cool. Um, for, yeah. for your entrepreneurial for sure. journey, for sure. Let's talk about money. I always like to ask this question, you know, do you have something, you know, in the money arena, uh, maybe a, um, something that you do to save or invest or spend wisely that you can share with the happy hustlers about money? Well, you know, I, I think security breeds, um, strength as an entrepreneur. So if you're, if you're not financially stable, you make, you don't make as good as decisions, right? Just like if your testosterone's low, you're not going to make as good as decisions or you're not thinking right, or you're into emotion and you're distracted. You don't make good if you're making these emotional decisions. So anything I can do to help make good decisions and strong decisions for my business and my family. So I highly recommend having a great life insurance policy, um, whole life, you know, and that's kind of cheesy because there's all these slick salesmen, but here's a hack. You can negotiate down their commissions. Like no one, you think you have to give them all those commissions. You don't. You can be like, wipe that, all those initial commissions out, and then I'll do the deal. So you can negotiate that. I didn't, um, and I have a really good guy, um, and he always follows up with me, and he gives me a lot of value add, so I'm okay with that. That when you get a policy, um, the reason that's great is because now your business can be protected because you can... Uh, the businesses carry on and pay off debt or whatever you needed to do if you're single so that your message and mission is, is continuing to go. Right. And if you have business partners, same thing, but more importantly for me, I know that my family's taken care of, um, with that whole yeah. life policy and I don't have to have, you know, $40 million sitting in the bag to take care of them. I have a really big, you know, policy on me so that I feel secure about the decisions that I'm making when I'm traveling. Like there's this unconscious, thing that happens when you have that security, knowing that your family and your business is going to be taken care of in case something happens to you. It's also a good zero risk, almost zero risk. It's one of the most stable financial um, vehicles that you can put your money into at a decent interest yep. rate um, to, to save. And then you can take more high risk stuff like crypto. I don't care what happens there, right? Or investing into someone else's business, which I do as well. Um, you can take the higher risk, but you also have this low risk base um, that you can work with and, you know, uh, buying a home and using that equity to buy another home and real estate. Of course, that's a great one big tip that I would give you. Don't stay focused on your business and investing into that. If, if, if you're in the health space, stay in the health space. Don't get distracted by the rich real estate guys, right? Don't yeah. get distract, distracted by the rich crypto guys, right? 
they're rich because they're focused on their niche, right? Um, you're great at what you do because you focused on your niche. Focus there um, and then hire out those other things later. You know, give your money to a, a real estate um, friend of yours that will invest for you, right? So stay focused, stay in your niche. Love that, man. That That's great advice. And, you know, I actually have whole life insurance policies as well. And I know our friend Garrett Gunderson has like 28 of them. So he's a big proponent. We did an episode together. If you guys want to go deep in that, we'll, we'll link it up in the show notes. But it, it is a, a sound financial vehicle. Uh, but you can get bent over. So you got to make sure that you, you, you get set up right. And, uh, and, and yeah, True. you know, just stay in your niche. So that's Watch awesome, Garrett's man. Let's talk about, sure. yeah, exactly. Let's talk about spirituality. Um, you know, I think it's important to have faith in something bigger than yourself. You know, I don't really care what people believe in, in terms of one religion or another. I just think you have to have faith in a higher power when it comes to tapping into, you know, a higher power for you. Do you have a, a happy hustle hack in this arena that you could share? Yeah. You know, I believe spiritual energy is your, your, your greatest energy because at the end of the day, what are you doing it for? Right. What's your end game? You can do it for your family. You can do it, you know, for money. You know, there, there's definitely some energy there. Um, um, some people use sexual energy big time. I want to be rich and that's a, a form of energy. Um, but the lasting long-term energy is eternity, right? And I think the more you can understand that the God of this universe, whatever you believe, if, you know, it's, it's hard if you're an atheist, right? But if, if, you're, if you're a God person in any way, um, and knowing the, one of the greatest strengths that you can create is knowing that God loves you unconditionally, no matter what, right? And a lot of people don't preach that message. And I, I surely do, because I've been through it all, right? Um, when it comes to faith and religion and religiosity and um, churches that think they know better than everybody else and listening to a pastor that, you know, and, and because he's a leader and listening to every word that comes out of his mouth and living my life, life based on that and parroting, parroting that, thinking that I'm better than other people. Like I, blah, you know, like that's a huge loss. But the importance of understanding that God loves you gives you so much energy because when you make a mistake, you quickly forgive yourself. God still loves me. You look at your past and you're still judging yourself because of maybe a religious path. Maybe you were Catholic or a whatever, you know, LDS or whatever you were. And you're still battling those, those demons. You're still battling your own mistakes, wondering if you should, uh, wishing you could have done it differently. Or you're judging um, that group. You're judging that church. You're judging those people. Like it's a big old waste of energy. Because if you understand how intimately God loves you on a daily basis, um, the distractions we talked about like Instagram, when you feel completely loved and filled up because the God of this universe and you accept that love um, every day and it just fills you up so you can spill it out into your family, you don't need the dopamine spike from Instagram. You don't need the you know to go uh, look at internet porn and another big energy waste because it's like you don't need that stuff. And a lot of the times we make mistakes and we do sinful things is because we don't we don't want success or we don't love ourselves or we don't feel loved. So but when you feel fully loved by the God of this universe, a lot of the your sin nature kind of falls off. That soulish whiny baby who wants what it wants, when it wants it, wants the food now. It just gives you a strength, bro, that um that can't be accessed in any other way, right? You can have the strong family, you can have the great finances and the money, um, the whole life policy that gives you strength. But if you don't have that strength by, from the God of this universe, the unlimited source of strength and power in your life, it's really hard to go to that next level. So all I think all the greats um, really have that sense. Of course, Einstein did um, as well, right? That was you know, uh, the end of it all for him as well as the God of the universe, um, providing and loving people. Amen, brother. Woo. I love it. Dang. Breathing hot fire today, Warren. It's really all about having that faith in a higher power. Like you, you got to believe in something bigger than yourself. So I, I'm really grateful that you shared, you know, your perspective there, man. Yeah. This has been phenomenal, and, and, and Warren. This I do no this is my perspective. So yeah, for sure, man. That's hey. what, you know, but I, I'm, I welcome it. I know the happy hustlers do too. Now I do like to put all my guests through a rapid fire round and then we will wrap this interview up. So this is where I just ask you random questions and you answer honestly, first thing that comes to mind. Are you ready? Yes, sir. 
All right. Favorite food. Go. Spaghetti. Favorite movie. Braveheart. Favorite book. Why you're not so smart. Favorite non-toxic alternative. Oh, shoot. Um, favorite <sighs> non-toxic alternative. Like food, anything? Anything. Um, <laughs> going for a hike, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. There you go. What's your spirit animal? My spirit animal? Um, definitely an eagle, for sure. Make the sound of a happy hustle rebel yell. Uh, ha happy hustle. Woohoo! Yeah, let's go! <laughs> Best business advice. Um, do because it matters. Three things you're most grateful for. My family, my faith, and my freedom. And if you had a billboard for the world to see with your last piece of content on it, what's that billboard read? You're loved and accepted. Boom. Crush that rapid fire round, brother. And listen, Warren, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge you, brother, for sharing your love, your light, your wisdom, your non-toxic truth, your unapologetic self, man. Just know how grateful I am for you and just our friendship and just our collaborations. And I'm just looking forward to continuing forward together. And, and I'm just grateful for you, man. So thank you. Same to you, brother. You're a, you're a light in my life and you always have been, you know, even when I was uh, going through my stuff with lawsuits and the pain and the hurt, you know, of, of entrepreneurship, you always had that smile that lit up the room and uh, brought joy to my life. So um, thank you for, for doing this and thank you for the Happy Hustle podcast and um, all your followers. Thank you, man. All right. I want to ask you just a wrap it up culmination, like if you had to just sum up our time together into, you know, one call to arms for all the happy hustlers out there, what would you say to all of them? You know, say, stay true to yourself and integrity and really find those energy sucks in your life. Um, just reclaim yourself by doing the right thing. And when you do the right thing, things work out. So anytime you make a decision, um, is this the right thing to do? Um, and if you can't honestly say yes, don't do it take the hard road and do the right thing. Even if you lose money, lose a relationship, embarrass yourself, always do the right thing because in the end, that's how you win. That's how you win big. Oh, love that. Check out non-toxic dad online guys. And Warren, final question, brother. What does happy hustling mean to you? Just like you said, man, happy hustling is when you're balanced and you're hustling you're happy while you're doing it. If you're grinding, um, you know, like some of the other uh, folks that are out there online and podcasts, just the grind and the grit, um, that's not how life is. You're not in flow state. You're not connected to, to spirit and to God. Um, so when you're connected to God and, you're, you're, and, and his love and the love of others, you're riding a wave um, that can be traumatic and powerful and scary, but you're happy and um, you're moving forward on that wave towards your destiny. And that's ultimately, you know, where I want us all to be is pulling back on the arrow of our destiny through all the challenges of life. It's the buildup of the energy of the wave. And there'll be that time by making good decisions, by doing it right, by doing the right thing. Eventually that critical mass happens and you'll launch that arrow and you'll hit the target of your destiny. And you only can do that with integrity, character, loving others, putting other people first, doing the happy hustle way. And that's why you're so passionate about it because you know it's the truth, bro. Oh, mic drop, y'all. Warren Phillips, thank you for watching and listening. We are out. Peace and love, everyone.